Hello and welcome to a very special program. This is episode three of Defending India. It's a new program that we've started where we look at key strategic patterns, trends, defense issues which directly impact India, not necessarily geographically linked to India, but even events which take place far away, for example, in the Pacific, have a direct bearing on us. It is an interconnected world, certainly in the field of technology. We look at technology, we look at strategy, we look at trends, we look at the armed forces and a lot more. First up, let's start about a new missile. It's called the Nirbhai. It's a subsonic cruise missile with a range of a thousand kilometers. It's been designed and developed by India's Defense Research and Development Organization, the DRDO. It's an all-weather, low-altitude missile capable of deep penetration and precision strikes. It hits targets very accurately. Now, the Nirbhai is equipped with a turbojet engine. It features a unique design that enables it to cruise at different altitudes ranging from 500 meters, very low, to 4 kilometers. It can be launched from multiple platforms including land, sea and air and that makes it a particularly versatile weapon system. Now, the missile's guidance system includes an inertial navigation system, a radio altimeter for accurate navigation and terminal phase homing as well. The Nirbhai is designed to carry conventional and nuclear warheads, making it a potent addition to India's strategic deterrence capabilities. Israel has increased its use of electronic controlled quadcopters for both intelligence purposes and military actions. These quadcopters have been deployed on a large scale in the Palestinian territories, with reports indicating their use for killing and injuring Palestinian terrorists. The deployment of these armed quadcopters represents a significant development in the region's military dynamics as they provide a new level of precision and flexibility in conducting operations. It is worth noting that these developments have not gone unnoticed or unchallenged. The video you actually see here is these quadcopters being used to hunt down targets and take them out. There have been instances, as I was saying, where these quadcopters have been successfully shot down as well demonstrating the effects made by the efforts made by other parties to counter the technology. The situation does remain fluid with ongoing developments and responses from various actors in the region. The Indian Navy ships INS Delhi, Shakti and Kilton visited Manila in the Philippines as part of an operational deployment of the Indian Navy's Eastern Fleet to the South China Sea. Now, the visit demonstrated India's strong ties with the Philippines and its commitment to further deepen this partnership. The port call included subject matter experts, meeting, meetings between the Indian Navy and the Philippines Navy, lots of cross-deck visits, basically an important outreach program. Now, that port call is a testament to the strong diplomatic and defense ties between India and the Philippines. It's a demonstration of India's commitment for maintenance of peace and stability in the region a part of India's Actis and Sagar policies. Now, part of the reason this is important is because India has made a significant stride in our defense diplomacy by selling the Brahmo supersonic cruise missile to the Philippines. Now, that was a deal valued at about $375 million. It marks India's largest overseas arms deal to date and represents a collaboration with Russia as the Brahmos missile is a joint development between our DRDO and Russia's NPO Machinostroynia. The sale of the Brahmos missiles to the Philippines is seen as a strategic move that could have a ripple effect across Southeast Asia. It underscores India's growing role as a significant defense exporter and our efforts to strengthen defense ties with countries in the region. The Brahmos is known for its precision, its speed, it's expected to enhance the Philippines' defense capabilities quite significantly. And the deal also reflects India's broader Make in India initiative, which aims to boost domestic manufacturing and position India as a global defense supplier. The export of the Brahmos is a testament to the success of this initiative and the capabilities of our defense industry. In conclusion, India's sale of the Brahmos missiles to the Philippines is a significant development in India's defense diplomacy. It not only enhances the Philippines' defense capability, but also positions India as a potentially major player in the global defense market. Why are we talking about this and why are we focusing so much on East Asia? That's because 
in the same region. In fact, in the Asia-Pacific region, China has significantly increased its military activities around Taiwan, conducting operations that nearly encircle the island and its surrounding territories. This includes sending more than 100 balloons over the Taiwan Strait, some of which have passed through Taiwan's territorial airspace or busy air corridors for civil aviation. Now, these balloons, along with a substantial number of aircraft and ships, are part of a broader strategy to pressure Taiwan and assert China's territorial claims. The Chinese military has deployed about 42 aircraft and 15 ships of the People's Liberation Army Navy, that's the Chinese Navy, in these operations. At least 28 of these have crossed the median line, in a sense, the line of control between China and Taiwan, that's right in the middle of the Taiwan Strait, in a move seen as a direct challenge to Taiwan's sovereignty. Additionally, the Chinese Coast Guard has been actively involved with 16 of its ships participating in the operations. Now, this increased military activity is part of a broader pattern of behavior by China towards Taiwan, which has intensified greatly in recent months. These actions are seen as part of China's pressure campaign towards Taiwan, aimed to assert its sovereignty, its illegal sovereignty claims over the island. The scale and frequency of these military activities and Coast Guard patrols have risen significantly, particularly since Taiwan's presidential election in January. In fact, the international community has taken note of these developments, with the International Institute for Strategic Studies highlighting the strategic implications of these actions, particularly in the context of complex regional security dynamics. India has significantly expanded our naval base, a major one in Karwar, which lies in coastal Karnataka. This expansion is part of Project Seabird, aimed at making it Karwar the largest such facility in Asia. The expansion includes a major new pier to berth warships and other vessels, along with residential accommodation. The newly inaugurated Pier 3 is 350 meters long. It can accommodate a host of warships, mine countermeasure vessels, Coast Guard vessels, and a lot more, and underscores India's commitment in enhancing our naval capabilities and infrastructure. When we talk about India's defense, the concept of theaterization, setting up theater commands, is something that's been looked at very closely. The Chief of Defence Staff, General Anil Chauhan, has been actively advocating jointness 2.0 among the Indian forces. Now, this initiative emphasises the development of a unified culture across the services while respecting each service's unique identity. The aim is to move towards joint operational structures which are seen as crucial for enhancing the military effectiveness of the Indian Armed Forces. General Chauhan has spoken about this at various forums. What exactly does it mean? where he's highlighted the need, need for strengthening jointmanship and fostering an environment of synergy within the armed forces. He's emphasized the importance of developing a joint culture, distinct from individual service cultures, as part of Jointness 2.0. It's not going to be easy, but the push for jointness is a significant step towards enhancing the operational effectiveness and efficiency of India's armed forces. It reflects a broader trend towards greater integration and cooperation among the three services, the Army, Navy and Air Force, in line with global best practices in modern warfare. Well, we've done a lot today on this program. We've been looking at the Chief of Defence Staff's advocacy for Jointness 2.0 and how it aligns with India's broader vision of the Indian government to transform the country's military into a more integrated and agile force. We've looked at what China is doing off the coast of Taiwan, the sale of the Brahmos missile system to the Philippines, Indian warships in the South China Seas as well. And we've also looked at technology, specifically the Nirbhai cruise missile. On Defending India, I'll be back every week to bring you the latest updates, important trends in an area which really needs to be covered a lot more. I'm Vishnu Shop.